Hello, good morning. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here and I appreciate the introduction. I'm delighted to talk about a topic that I work throughout my whole professional career, about photovoltaics. In particular, I'm going to talk about the role of science, engineering and technology for the clean energy transition. I'm Marko Topic, as the session chair already mentioned, I'm the chairman of the European Technology and Innovation Platform Photovoltaics and a professor at the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia. Europe has committed to mitigate climate change and the, and the new president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, already in 2018 announced the European Green Deal. It is actually uh, a deal to propose uh, uh, completely yeah, uh, mitigate the, the climate change in our continent and definitely to bring uh, Europe forward. Um, it is the strong knowledge and innovation potential that is needed to make this transition. And I'm happy to uh, just uh, 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 yeah, give you information on the very recent document, only a few days ago, uh, where European Commission uh, sent out a report uh, from to the, to the European Parliament and the Council uh, as a progress on progress of uh, clean energy competitiveness, where it acknowledges uh, three key technologies uh, to bring this um, transition towards the clean energy. And it are, they are offshore renewables uh, with wind and ocean and definitely also solar photovoltaics. Uh, it is uh, a knowledge in this document that the strong knowledge and innovation potential of EU research institutions, the skilled labor force and the existing and emerging industry players across the whole value chain provide an excellent basis for re-strengthening a strong European PV supply chain. Building a sizable EU PV manufacturing would definitely reduce the risk of supply disruptions and quality risks. I'm satisfied that Europe selected solar PV as the key technology for clean energy. Europe should assure through continuous and accelerated support that the solar PV technology across the whole value chain upstream by re-strengthening the manufacturing and innovation and downstream by accelerating deployment will make the clean energy transition a success. Everything is coordinated under the umbrella of the integrated solar energy technology plan and our European technology and innovation platform photovoltaics is one of the 10 platforms where the coordination is taking care. And actually I'm grateful and I would like to acknowledge the great participation and, and contribution of all the pool of experts with more than 300 experts across the whole across the whole value chain and all the stakeholders, but also in particular the contribution of the members of the steering committee to make it a success. It is about uh, mainly uh, uh, harmonized views uh, through published in, in the relevant documents uh, where ATPV provides advice and uh, suggestions for further progress uh, in terms of science, engineering and technology. And uh, it is our vision that I want to share today with you uh, that photovoltaic solar energy has a potential, not only a potential, but, but can be a, a key building block and a solution for the clean energy transition. That's why we call this our vision uh, that it's going to be big and beyond being big. And actually, it can truly contribute to a sustainable energy and with the climate change mitigation uh, lowering or uh, that lowering or uh, reaching the target of 1.5 degree 
Celsius increase limit by 2050. So we definitely are with all the young people and uh, we want to share their opinion and support and advocate for the opinion that there is no other planet, but definitely we have only one planet to enjoy our and be privileged to live. About the solar PV, if we look at the progress in the last decade, uh, it is a tremendous growth and uh, uh, global installed capacity uh, has been in the last five years, actually each year 100 gigawatt uh, installed capacity has been globally uh, deployed, uh, which of course brings us to the new era. It is actually the terawatt scale of photovoltaics that we are we started to talk about and uh, i'm proud to be the member of this important uh, community providing technological solutions through continuous research development uh, and innovation um, it is about the cost and price competitiveness that photovoltaics uh, reached. Actually, the PV sector, uh, if you look at the segment of PV systems on the roofs, uh, it is a mid-size uh, from 10 to 100 kilowatts uh, power systems. In Germany, the in the heart of Europe, in the central Europe, we can say that actually the evolution of prices was tremendous in the last years. Actually, in, in a decade, the prices of a uh, uh, turnkey um, average price of, of such a system dropped for 70% and it still continues to go down. So it is actually the um, cost competitiveness that uh, uh, it was a driver for this uh, strong deployment. And, but on the other hand, also the efficiency across uh, different regions uh, that such PV systems provide is important. And as we can see here, it is actually that efficiency in the Northern parts is higher. This is relative annual effective efficiency uh, relative to the nominal efficiency of PV systems uh, that reducing the latitude. So going towards South, the efficiency goes down uh, and this is primarily due to uh, higher temperatures both ambient as well as uh, temperatures of the PV modules that actually reduce the annual uh, effective efficiency uh, with an exception of the uh, higher al attitude, altitude regions in particularly the Alps where of course the again the temperature uh, goes down and that's why the relative annual efficiency goes up. It is not only about the price and efficiency, but it is also about the energy payback time where photovoltaics excels. Uh, actually, if we look at the study uh, made by JRC uh, in, within European Commission, it is actually the energy payback time of silicon PV rooftop systems that is very short. Of course, it depends on the region uh, and uh, directly related to the irradiation uh, from um, north of Europe, where irradiation is lower. We can see that the energy payback time is in the range of 1.5 years, while in the southern parts of Europe, it goes even below uh, one year of energy payback time and taking into account the lifetime of 30 years for such a system, uh, actually we generate additional uh, energy and elect actually electricity, electrical energy for the remaining 29 years or even more. So uh, coming to the uh, another aspect uh, to compare photovoltaics to uh, other energy technologies. Uh, and we use the levelized cost of electricity as a, a, a fair and uh, objective measure 
of uh, uh, competitiveness. And uh, we can see that uh, PV is uh, uh, the cheapest electricity source almost everywhere, starting with the southern regions like Malaga in Spain or Rome in Italy. Uh, you can see the, that here we have actually uh, the uh, spot average prices of electricity with the black bars and then the cost levelized cost of electricity uh, with either 2% nominal uh, weighted average uh, capital cost or cost of capital and then added the additional 2% then uh, up to 7% or even 10% of uh, nominal uh, weighted um, average uh, co cost of capital, uh, where we can clearly see that, of course, we are way, way cheaper than the actual spot prices of electricity. And this is true also in Central Europe, like Toulouse in France or Munich in Germany, or even in the northern parts where the, the, in the rainy London, or even in Finland, in Helsinki, we can see that the prices of, of our levelized cost of electricity is lower than the um, spot energy prices, electricity prices um, in this all the cities across Europe. So where we are heading uh, and uh, why uh, we, what we can learn from the recent uh, progress in science, engineering and technology. And uh, actually we are facing new efficiency records as a result of scientific research and innovation. And at the same time, a strong reduction of prices with new low price records. Um, and of course, these are the foundations that the deployment is uh, increasing and is growing. And actually in 2017, 39% of all added global electricity generating capacity comes from PV and renewable energy sources generating electricity were uh, their share was 70%. So we had more than half of the share of renewable energy sources in this respect. It is uh, that the global cumulative power exceeded 500 gigawatt and we reached the terawatt uh, era and we estimate that in already in two years time, we will have more than one terawatt um, capacity installed and in operation in globally speaking. And already in, in let's say five to eight years, we can expect realistically that the annual production will be one terawatt of photovoltaic systems uh, in a year. So uh, definitely the whole globe is going through a dramatic a disasters, uh, either speaking in Australia with fires we, in, in US, with terrible fires in California, Colorado, and so on. And the global climate change is definitely um, here. It, the, what is scary and what makes me worry is that increases of CO2 emissions continue and are not slowed down as they should happen. Uh, it is the target of COP21 uh, that we would need to make uh, net zero CO2 emissions by mid 50s in this 21st century. Um, and off beyond that point, we should take care of massive CO2 removals from the ecosystem to mitigate this in temperature increase globally. Um, it is not only the scientific community but also industry that recognized this must to happen. And uh, as an example, Shell uh, company uh, launched in 2018 a sky scenario. They projected the reduction of CO2 emissions as shown here in this curve, that it needs to happen by 2070, uh, but certainly an uh, early upcomers will and Europe dedicated and committed to make it happen by 2050. But this will request a complete restructuring of energy sector in all the segments, including the transport and all the other 
uh, sectors that we will need to change our even our behavior and by stronger and accelerated deployment of renewable sources and pv is a key technology recognized by europe and i believe also globally uh, to demonstrate how much pv can contribute is to show you that four terawatts of P installed pv systems can re help reduction roughly by such a, a amount of co2 reductions so it is actually uh, a driver also to limit and reduce the co2 uh, emissions so uh, we highlighted that 100 percent renewables are uh, an option, an, a serious option that actually electricity uh, uh, can be um, generated and the importance of solar PV uh, to reach the goal of 100% renewables in a cost-effective and sustainable way uh, by Professor Christian Breyer and his group uh, who is, and Christian Breyer is also a member of the scientific committee of the ATIP PV. And actually, the vision uh, builds on, on the fact that photovoltaics can provide um, and play a key building block of future energy supply in order to deliver on Paris Agreement, on the climate uh, uh, change mitigation, as well as the um, clean energy transition. And it is based on the facts that Photovoltaics has recently become the lowest cost renewable energy. It allows significant decrease of green gas, uh, house gas emissions uh, in the electricity sector and beyond. It is that it is socially acceptable energy transition. It needs to be deployed massively, but also manufacturing and installation capacity needs to grow accordingly. In case of Europe, in order to limit EU's dependence on energy import and PV import. Our reason is that in 2050, we can generate and provide electricity to all uh, with a major share coming from solar PV, followed by wind and hydro, so to provide the 100% renewable electricity and energy scenario. Uh, reality. As you can see, uh, compared to the 2015 case, uh, case or reality, there will be a dramatic change and massive deployment uh, in the renewables energy sector. And uh, coming to the research, development, innovation of photovoltaics, it is actually a learning curve that we can dem uh, yeah, demonstrate through uh, the history of evolution of best research solar cell efficiencies. It is no revolution, but continuous evolution and step-by-step -step progress in any of the technologies that have been researched and uh, uh, deployed um, within the PV community. And uh, uh, we can, of course, um, say and be proud of this tremendous progress with uh, on both uh, silicon uh, photovoltaics as well as thin film photovoltaics but also uh, multi-junction uh, advanced concepts that uh, boost the efficiency up to almost 50 percent and we are just waiting to exceed the 50 percent bar uh, with the record solar cell efficiencies it is about the science, engineering, and technology that brings forward in technology. It is uh, the progress in silicon, and the latest uh, trends can be um, uh, yeah, uh, read in, in the ITRPV report, which has been just recently updated with the 2020 version uh to the to the report 2019 it is uh about the uh, trends uh, 
in thin film photovoltaics and semi-transparent photovoltaics that opens completely new aspects of applications uh, with curve, curved uh, uh, surfaces uh, for buildings and other uh, um, objects. It is the high efficiency rays in tandem um, solar cells combining uh, different uh, um, materials in case of perovskite silicon tandem with a record efficiency of 29% uh, above 29% by Helmholtz Centrum Berlin uh, and uh, uh, on a full size wafer uh, exceeding the uh, yeah already the 28% conversion efficiency by Oxford PV uh, and other alternative tandem concepts for high efficiency solar cells to be a large area and massively deployed for terrestrial photovoltaics. Um, in technological innovations, we uh, follow the innovations across the whole value chain, including reliability and bankability that are drivers for lowering further the levelized cost of uh, electricity. And it is all about integrated photovoltaics being innovative and intelligent. It is not only to be building applied photovoltaics, but also building integrated photovoltaics that will contribute substantially to the consumption of, uh, to the reduction of consumption of electricity and uh, energy in buildings. It is uh, going up also to urban and environmental environment integrated photovoltaics, either uh, in, in uh, agricultural fields or on waters, both uh, rivers, uh, lakes and seas. And this is called floating PV. And the deployment of photovoltaics with innovation, uh, innov innovative applications in Internet of Think gadgets and especially in transport with vehicle integrated photovoltaics com combined with uh, electric vehicles and uh, batteries um, that are a new field of application where a sustainable uh, transport can be uh, made, made, make, made reality and definitely uh, all these innovations are opening new market niches for end products and massive deployment. In terms of um, further on, um, it is off-grid or microgrid um, and PV com combined with storage that opens new uh, concepts of energy unions either very locally or on isolated islands or uh, uh, in a larger scale, but uh, also making electricity from photovoltaics and wind, especially offshore wind, opens a window of opportunity, but also a reality to make any form of energy from power and this is called the power to X, either power to heat, uh, power to fuels, uh, with um, very uh, uh, promoted uh, uh, in Europe, the, the green hydrogen as a new economy, uh, and then from hydrogen making methane and other fuels and chemicals, uh, for instance, ammonia and other materials, uh, to close the loop for the sustainable energy sector. Uh, on the system level, we definitely are uh, working on intelligent power control and smart grid to make it uh, reliable and uh, a re reliable supply of electricity anywhere it is needed. But of course, it is also relevant to make it reliable in terms of security so uh, many innovations and research is also focusing on providing cybersecurity. 
and digitalization. In terms of non-technological innovations, uh, we are also working on the new business models. Uh, and one of them is blockchain technology uh, with many, many new ideas and new startup companies uh, having new concepts to make it happen that uh, um, yeah, this transition will be a success. Uh, I would like to conclude that actually it is the research and innovation is interdisciplinary than ever. And I would like to invite you to the PV conference that our ATPV is organizing. It is online on the 18th and 19th November and the PV era is just getting started. So not only on grounds, but also in all the buildings and cities it is, can be of any color and of any shape. It, it goes not only, on, not only on the grounds, but also on the seas and of course in the air. So we are just contributing to the energy transition in terms of, also in terms of ecology and sustainability and the society as a whole. Today, I didn't have time to talk about science and engineering and technology in my lab, but definitely if you want, you, you can search and find all our papers. And here are just two books that we published with my quarters. And I would like to finish that actually being a scientist, professor, engineer and ambassador of photovoltaics is my mission and a dream job. It is about passion and devotion. It is about working together at the platform of photovoltaics as shown on the picture or in the lab and enjoying and having good time with great colleagues for the benefit of humanity. I'm truly grateful. Sincere thanks for continuous support to many and thank you for your attention.